I want to ask you as well about some um, controversial distribution, we could call it that way. I had an interview recently with uh, three other guys. Tony was one of them, and um, I remisk Joshua Blaze. They have YouTube channels, right? And we touched on a point there about this distro. Have you heard about it, Omarchi? And uh, yep. Tony it's doesn't a, like a, it. It's and, a current uh, hype. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 yeah, that, that's right. What are your thoughts on it? Have you used it? Do you have any thoughts, anything you want to share about it? Well, the guy who made it uh, is a creator of Ruby on Rails, so it's a very popular figure. And I don't think that he created this distribution to be used by a vast majority of people. I think he's making it for his own pleasure. That's how I see it. I think he's making it for his own pleasure. He calls it opinionated, but what it actually means, I uh, configure it this way and everyone is going to use it this way uh, because you will want to. Mm. My way is the best way. If you don't want my way, then feel free to use whatever else there is, you know. Uh, but the way he designed it um, is like a lot of people who are unable to use Arch because they're not technically competent to read the Arch wiki, uh, then they like to have something that is pre-configured out of the box and it's basically the same for everyone. And um, uh, I have a couple of reasons why I will not use Omarchi. And these are not necessarily the reasons for other people. First, it is based on Arch Linux and I'm not saying that Arch is bad. I'm saying that everything that is based on Arch is bad because I have no clue why it exists. Arch Linux is an independent distribution, a really good one uh, if it suits your needs. And from my point of view, everything that is based on Arch is just whatever. I don't know why it exists. Like if you want to use Arch, use Arch. The, all of the all, all of the other distributions that just attach themselves onto the Arch package manager and onto the Arch package maintainers is just like um, uh, now I'm going Roller to say coaster. something. No, no, I'm <laughs> going to say something really, really ugly, uh -huh. and I'm going gonna, gonna get a lot of hate for this, but uh, I, I really want to say it in this way. Uh, you know what uh, leeches do? Yep. So, if you want to design your own uh, Linux distribution, why don't you do it properly? Like your own package manager. Yeah, do it. Ev do everything from scratch. Like be the man. Be the man. Do everything properly, and make an independent distribution. And don't depend on Debian. Don't depend on uh, you know. A lot of these distributions are like ah, I have tweaked the kernel a little bit. Uh -huh. That's that's a dig for the uh, what's it called uh, cache OS. Uh, we have tweaked the kernel a little bit, so it's now uh, zero point five percent faster in video games, and <laughs> we are now we are now very uh, very good Linux distribution. But essentially, we are just Arch Linux with a slightly modified kernel. Uh, whatever, dude. Uh, a lot of other distributions are very similar in this way, and I'm not saying they should stop existing. I'm only saying that I don't see the reason why I would use any of them. Um, so I like Debian for what it is. I mm. do like Arch mm. Linux for what it is. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I'm not an Arch hater. I really like it for what it is, uh, but I don't see myself using it anymore. Uh, then an XOS is really, really cool in its own way. Uh, but once again, I'm the one who doesn't see myself using it. Uh, maybe I will change my mind. I don't know. But right now, I don't think I will. Um, and there are, are a couple more like Fedora Linux, really unique uh, in its own way uh, and um, stuff like that. So I don't know. At the same time, uh, I do recommend Zorin, uh, and I will explain this why. Zorin is based on Ubuntu, and okay. they don't they don't change much, but they 
tweak the default GNOME environment with their own skins that resemble Mac and Windows a lot. They have multiple skins so you can pick and choose. Uh, this alone helps the newcomers from these two operating systems to feel slightly warmer like at home because it kind of looks like what they used to be using and I'm talking primarily about normal users not okay the normies use normies yes uh, <laughs> uh -huh. people who yeah that's that's not a bad word that's uh -huh. that's a word for people who want their computer to get the hell out of their way they just mm -hmm. want to use it and they are used to uh like on, on the Zorin did a couple of things just right in my opinion and this is why I recommend it to the new people um when you're new people, uh, new new person coming from Windows, you're used to like I I want OBS. Let's see, do you want OBS? And the way that you have used to downloading OBS on Windows is you go to OBS website, you click download, and the OBS web page is stupid enough that it will uh, offer you Windows version first, and not it will not automatically recognize what OS you are on, and maybe by reflex you will click on the windows uh, button it will download uh, obs.exe on your zorin os and you will run this icon it looks like a normal windows installer you can run it and it pops up with a little message uh, this is what zorin does uh, we have detected that you're trying to install obs we have a lot better place for you to install this in uh, on Linux, please click this button to take you to Linux store uh, to install it properly like a native Linux package. It, it's a small text. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's and the buttons are like um, the, the, the highlighted button is the one that takes you to Linux store and the non-highlighted button is uh, no, I know what I'm doing. I want to install the Windows version. And if you install the Windows version of OBS, then the Windows compatibility compatibility layer fires out auto automatically and installs itself uh, fully in a fully automated way, and it uh, works with Windows binaries. Uh, but generally, wind? yeah, yeah, through Wind, but okay. it is so well automated okay. by by the Zorin team that you will not notice that this is Wind. It's just uh, do you want to run this executable uh, that is Windows? We, we can do that for you. And you click yes, and it works. Uh, of course, it still works uh, as good as anything else works in Wine. Zorin doesn't make Wine work better. They only make it uh, easier to use. Mm. Uh, because with uh, raw Wine, you have to understand how the config files work and stuff like that. Uh, with Zorin, it, it, it's just pre-configured for a lot of different packages uh, and when you click OK take me to the store it takes you to the um, uh, like Zorin kind of a store which is basically GNOME store which basically hooks up to the flat hub and installs the um, typical latest version of uh, containerized applications you know it's it really serves the end user normie in a good way mm, and okay. once this normie becomes becomes very comfortable with linux uh most likely they will try other distributions and uh, then they are ready to try them you know on their own but as a new person uh, coming towards me to ask for a question I will never tell them to try Arch because they will hate me. And they will hate Linux and they will hate, hate all of the YouTubers because I told them to use Arch. So mm. it's not a good way to build Linux community. And I don't mean my community, I mean the whole Linux community. If you want new users, you have to help them with onboarding the best you can and um, I would like to recommend Debian, but it's not that easy to install for a plain normie. Yeah, for a beginner. It's, ju yeah. it's just not. Uh, and I can make a um, uh, all of the guides for that, but Zorin is just a lot easier. You know, it, it's just literally next, next, next.
what do you use on servers? Do you use do you, you run any distro on your servers? Yeah, all of them are Debian. Okay, that's what I was thinking when I decided to, you know, do you use any hypervisor? Do you have a home lab or something or no? Yeah, yeah, I, I use uh, the built-in hypervisor in the uh, in, in Linux. Oh, okay. The, the K, KVM, no? in, in the kernel, kernel uh, how, what, is, what is it called? Kernel virtual machine. Okay, okay, okay. Um, cause I was thinking, okay, what should I use in all my servers? And I was, Ubuntu is what you see everywhere, but I was like, but why am I going to go with this kit of Debian? Why don't I go to the daddy directly? Why don't I go to the source? Is there a reason why people use Ubuntu on servers? I have been using yeah. Debian on servers for years and I have installed, well, I installed Docker on them, Kubernetes, and I just mm -hmm. run stuff in Docker and Kubernetes, right? The host machines don't do much. Some of them do, right? I have my DNS yeah. servers on, on Debian, some cluster clusters as well. But why do people use something other than Debian in servers, you know, when they could be using Debian? Well, uh, for one thing, uh, 